Hey guys, so in this video I want to show you how to calculate torque on a disc with forces in a bunch of different directions. Now, this picture looks sort of scary at first, what's, what's going on with all these arrows, um, and you may not see something as complicated as this. Um, I'm putting it all together so we can talk about it all at once, but you should know how to handle um, all these different situations individually or together. Let's check it out. Um, so here we have a composite disc, which means there's two different discs. You got the inner disc, which is the dark one here, and then the outer disc here. This is so you can have two different radii. Um, they are free to rotate about a fixed axis perpendicular through its center. So basically the discs can spin this way, right? Um, all the forces listed here are 100 newtons and there's four of them. So let's just write F1, uh, actually let's make this one F1, F1, F2, F3, and this one's going to be F4. They're all 100. Um, and the angles are 37. The only angle here is 37 is this one. All the other ones are sort of either flattened the X or flattened the Y. The dotted lines are either exactly parallel or exactly perpendicular to each other. What does that mean? That just means that this line is the same as this line. They're parallel to each other. And that these lines here make a 90 degree angle. So all these lines are making 90 degree angles with each other. Cool. Uh, the inner disc has a radius of three meters. What that means is that this distance here is three meters and an outer radius of, uh, and the outer disc has a radius of five meters, which means that this line over here, this entire distance over here is five meters, okay? We wanna know the net torque produced on disc about its central axis, and we're gonna use plus or minus to indicate direction, clockwise, counterclockwise. So the net torque, um, torque net, is the same thing as the sum of all torques. There are four forces, so there's potentially four torques. Remember, a force may cause a torque. There are four forces, so you can have as many as four torques, but some forces may not cause a torque. So let's let's do one by one here. Torque one, this guy, is F1. Let's first actually leave a space for the sine, positive or negative, so we don't forget. Um, F1, R1, sine of theta one. And we'll do the sine a little later. The first thing we do I know F, so I can plug that in there. It's pretty straightforward. The first thing we do is we draw an R vector, then we figure out theta, and then we figure out the sine, okay? So the R vector um, is the distance, is the, the vector from the axis of rotation to the point where the force happens. In this case, the R vector for F1 is an arrow this way. This is R1. And R1 has a length of the outer disc, which is five, okay? and then sine of theta. The angle that R1 makes with F1 is 90 degrees, so I'm gonna put a 90 here. Now in terms of sine, imagine you have a disc and you're pushing this way on the disc. So you have a disc and you're pulling like this, so the disc is going like this because you're pulling in this direction, right? Um, you can also imagine as you're like sort of stroking the disc this way, right, the disc is gonna spin like that. Um, so this is going to be a positive torque because it's causing the disc to spin in a counterclockwise in the direction of the unit circle. So it's positive. This is one and you just end up with positive 500 of torque, 500 newton meter. All right, so torque two, box F2, R2, sine of theta two. I know F2 is 100, but I gotta figure out R and theta. So I'll leave those blank. Um, F2 is right here. F2 acts in the middle of the, uh, acts on top of the axis of rotation. Therefore, the R2 will be zero. R2 equals zero, which means there is no torque at all. When you have something that pulls on the axis of rotation, it produces no torque because there is no R, and you can see from the equation that the whole thing becomes zero. So it doesn't matter what the angle is, and it doesn't matter what the sign is, because you just have zero, okay? Um, for torque three, Again, box, space for positive or negative, F3, R3, sine of theta three. And the force is 100. We gotta figure out R and theta. If you look at F3, F3 acts on the edge of the outer disc. This is what the R3 vector looks like, right? R3 right here. So R3 vector has a length of the outer radius, which is five. But the problem is these two arrows make an angle of 180 degrees with each other. 
and the sine of 180 is zero, okay? Sine of 180 is zero, so it doesn't matter what the sine is because, um, what the, whether it's positive or negative, the direction, because the torque will be zero. Imagine a disc, and if you push directly towards the middle of the disc, you don't cause the disc to spin. The only way to cause the disc to spin is to either push sort of tangentially on the disc um, or to like push at an angle, right? So if you have a disc and you go like this, it's going to spin. But if you push like this on a disc, it doesn't spin, okay? Um, now let's do torque four. This is the, the ugly one up here. And let's figure out what happens. So box, um, I'm just gonna jump straight into it. The, the F4 is 100 radius sine of theta. So this one we're gonna slow down a little bit and be a little bit more careful. Notice that it's touching on the inner radius, um, the inner disc. So I'm just gonna redraw just the inner disc. I'm gonna write here that this has a radius of three because it's the inner one. Let me make this a little bigger. Radius equals three. Um, this force acts like this right there. This is the center. First thing we draw is the axis, um, the R vector. The R vector is from the axis to the point where the force happens. Um, notice that here, this would look like this. So this dotted line is just an extension of your R vector. And there's an angle of 37 degrees here. Okay, so you gotta figure out which angle to use. First of all, the distance will be the entire radius of the inner circle of the inner um, disc, so it's three. And what about the vector? So what, you, what about the angle? So what you could do is you get the R vector here and you can extend it this way, right? And to make it easier to notice that this is in fact the angle you should use. It's the angle between the two um, lines. So 37 is the correct angle. Okay. Remember, the angle given to you isn't always the one you're supposed to use. In fact, it's usually not the one you're supposed to use, uh, but in this case, it turned out to be that way. What about the direction in which this thing will spin? So, you should imagine that if you're pu pushing a disc like this, it's actually going to spin like this. One way that would make this easier is to think of this as a, not as a, uh, not as a push on the disc, but as a pull. You're essentially pulling the disc, I'm sort of redrawing this F, Four over here, just kind of extending it down. You're pulling, you're pushing this way. You're causing it to go like that. Okay. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. It's pretty, it's a pretty visual thing there, but hopefully you can follow that. Um, so this direction here is in the direction of the unit circle. It's counterclockwise, so it's positive. Okay, positive. And if you multiply this whole thing, you get that uh, torque four is positive 180. Newton meter. And to find the net torque, we just add everything up. I got two of them that were zero, so it's just the positive 500 and the positive 180, which gives you positive 680 Newton meter. Okay? That's it for this one. Um, hopefully it made sense. Let me know if you have any questions, and let's keep going.